Okay, so some of the big news is about Tucker Carlson. Um, I want you to hear what I have to say before you run off and say, Gerda said this. Um, I'm beginning to think he's a bit of a genius in marketing, not because of his position supporting Putin, which I think is deplorable, but in marketing. Think about he's how he's become the story. He doesn't even, like, we're not even talking about his interview with Putin yet. This is just building up toward the interview with Putin. And because he'll be the first... American journalist to interview Putin since 2021. And when you can interview someone that's rare or scarce, it's more valuable. Um, it'll be amplifying that. And the tragedy here is that he's going to be amplifying the words of Vladimir Putin rather than while he's claiming to be a journalist, rather than as a journalist asking Putin the tough questions because he's trying to poke holes in it, which is what journalists do. Um, if he was being fair, I wouldn't have a problem with him interviewing Putin, but I, I don't think that's what's going to happen here. Okay, so this is the Hill. Russia is keeping its cards close to the chest over the swirling speculation that former Fox News host Tucker Carlson could interview Russian President Vladimir Putin. I think it's looking like he's either about to or has already and has released it. Here's Tucker Carlson en route to the Kremlin to interview Vladimir Putin. I don't know if that's his car or not, but it's all over Twitter. Here's the Kiev Independent. Tucker Carlson visiting Moscow is like touring Berlin in 1940. And I don't think that's entirely fair. But again, let's think about this. He's traveling to Moscow to interview a dictator like Putin in the year 2024. How is that different than visiting 1940 with Adolf Hitler? Well, if you're fawning all over Hitler or Putin or not asking the tough questions and not really trying to do that, like, like if he was trying to ask Putin questions like he would try to ask Biden in order to try to like really ask the hardball questions, I'd say fine, like let him let him ask that, but that's not what's going to happen. And so that is perhaps going to be, and we'll see what the video looks like when it comes out, uh, him amplifying Putin's narrative, and then that would be very much like asking Adolf Hitler in the 1940s. Uh, Anton Gershenko, Russian propagandist, described Tucker Carlson's visit to Moscow with the wonders of civilization that U.S. citizens cannot even dream of. Okay, that quote comes from, he's eating in a restaurant, and the commentator is talking about how, see, he's eating in our fine restaurants, and he's amazed by the wonders of our fast, free internet. I mean, you got to go see the Russian media monitor for that, and it's, it's just, it's pretty funny to watch. Alex Jones is saying, release the interview, Tucker, don't sit on it. If Alex Jones is rooting for you, I'm not sure that that's a good sign. Like This is propagandist in chief. Um, so, okay. Russell Brand weighing in. Is Tucker on his way to interview Putin? Is he a traitor or is he a journalist asking questions that many of us want answered about this war? Well, so that's a leading question. Is he a traitor or is he a journalist? I don't know that those are the categories. I think what it is, is, is he a journalist or is he a, an opinion commentator? And Tucker, to my understanding, is an opinion commentator who holds a distinctive view. He's not doing hardline news. How do you send Wolf Blitzer from CNN? or Brett Baer from Fox News. I think you would have got a fair interview with Putin. Either way, believe it or not, I think Brett Baer would hold his, hold his feet to the fire if he was granted that kind of interview. But Tucker's doing opinion work. I'm doing opinion work, right? I'm not claiming to be totally neutral. I'm trying to expose what's going on here. Tucker's doing opinion work for the Kremlin here, and that's going to amplify Putin's narrative. So this is the Russian media monitor where they were talking about he had a nice lunch in a restaurant. He went for a ride downtown. He rode the subway, the beauty of which he had to acknowledge, and traveled via land transport. He charged his smartphone via a USB port and connected to fast and free Wi-Fi internet. Americans can't even dream about such wonders of civilization. Okay, uh, I, yeah, that's a little bit much. Here's Jackson Hinkle talking about uh, Tucker Carlson on RT. Why do you think Tucker Carlson's visit to Russia has drawn so much media attention stateside? Well, I think you have to look at all of the people who are funding this war in Ukraine, all of the U.S. deep state warmongers who told us that we had to send hundreds of billions of dollars in taxpayer funds abroad to fund a Nazi military in the effort of destroying Russian civilization. Destroy okay, let's let's start that. Deep state 
Well, that's conspiracy theory language, but let's set that aside. Warmongers, who's the warmonger? The one that invades Ukraine or those who are helping Ukraine defend themselves? And like, we send this money for that purpose, and but Putin gets a pass on that, and the Ukrainians are Nazis, and he has zero proof of that. What? What? Okay, but Jackson Hinkle is defending Tucker Carlson. Okay, a little bit more. Let's watch what Tucker actually has to say, because I think that's relevant. Let's let's hear his own uh, view of this. We're in Moscow tonight. We're here to interview the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. We'll be doing that soon. Now, again, I think he's a genius in just slipping out quietly and letting it become the story. Not genius because he's smart in who he's advocating for, but like he's become a story that is giving the story when he actually interviews it a life of its own. Okay. There are risks to conducting an interview like this, obviously. So we thought about it carefully. What's the risk? Putin's going to love you. I mean, he's going to want to use you as a useful idiot. And I'm not calling him an idiot. I'm saying he's somebody who's going to perpetuate the propaganda on behalf of Russia. Where's the risk? Over many months. Here's why we're doing it. First, because it's our job. We're in journalism. Our duty is to inform people. Yes, but you're in opinion journalism, and that's a little different than it's my job. I have a moral obligation to do this because I'm a journalist. He's by no means neutral. Two years into a war that's reshaping the entire world, most Americans are not informed. They have and, and that's a fair a point. I don't think that Americans are as informed as they should be. And he even has a right to have his own opinion and think the way he does. No real idea what's happening in this region, here in Russia or 600 miles away in Ukraine. But they should know. They're paying for much of it in ways they might not fully yet perceive. The war in Ukraine is a human disaster. It's left hundreds of thousands of people dead an entire generation of young Ukrainians, and has depopulated the largest country in Europe. But the long-term effects are even more profound. This war has utterly reshaped the global military and trade alliances, and the sanctions that followed have as well. And in total, they have upended the world economy. And where would he place the blame for that? With Zelensky? or with Putin. And that's really the interesting thing here. Unless he's going to be um, really asking those hard questions, I, I mean, I don't know that he has a leg to stand on. Now, I was thinking about this and I thought, wouldn't it be fascinating if he were to go ask or go have a conversation with Zelensky as well? No, that's not going to happen. Just as a thought experiment. Do you think he'd ask Zelensky harder questions than he would ask Putin? That would be really telling. The post-World War II economic order, the system that guaranteed prosperity in the West for more than 80 years, is coming apart very fast, and along with it, the dominance of the U.S. dollar. These are not small changes. They are history-altering developments. They will define the lives of our grandchildren. Most of the world understands this perfectly well. They can see it. Ask anyone in Asia or the Middle East what the future looks like. And yet the population so with the dominance of the dollar coming to the end, the lack of uh, American hegemony, that kind of language is Russian propaganda language being said in Tucker's voice. I mean, it's it's really interesting. If you read RT and see what they have to say, and then you hear what he what he is saying here, it matches up pretty well. It's fascinating. Relations of the English speaking countries seem mostly unaware. They think that as nothing has really changed. And they think that because no one has told them the truth. Their media outlets are corrupt. They lie to their readers and viewers. And they do that mostly by omission. For example, But Tucker is going to be the one that brings you the truth. For example, since the day the war in Ukraine began, American media outlets have spoken to scores of people from Ukraine, and they have done scores of interviews with Ukrainian President Zelensky. We ourselves have put in a request for an interview with Zelensky, and we hope he accepts. But the interviews he's already done in the United States are not traditional interviews. They are fawning pep sessions, specifically designed to amplify Zelensky's demand that the U.S. enter more deeply into a war in Eastern Europe. And, and Tucker is going to, in more than likely, and I haven't seen the video yet, but we will see it soon, probably do the same kind of fawning pep session for Putin. 
And that's the problem. If he's saying that this is wrong for Zelensky, it's also wrong for Putin. So, okay, asking someone the hard questions, that would be fair on either side. But this idea that he's going to go and get the answers and bring the truth back to the people who haven't been able to hear it because he actually spoke with Putin. There's a lot of people that already lean away from Ukraine and toward Russia that are going to buy that kind of nonsense. Pay for it. That is not journalism. It Neither is, is this. Propaganda. Propaganda of the ugliest kind, the kind that kills people. At the same time, our politicians and media outlets have been doing this promoting a foreign leader like he's a new consumer brand, not a single Western journalist has bothered to interview the president of the other country involved in this conflict, Vladimir Putin. Most Americans have no idea why Putin invaded Ukraine or what his goals are. No, uh, no. Putin actually told us why he was invading Ukraine, and none of those arguments actually hold water. Now, we've never heard his voice. That's wrong. Americans have a right to know all they can about a war they're implicated in. And we have the right to tell them about it because we are Americans too. And that's fair. He has a right to ask questions and he's going to put himself in a position like someone like Walter Durante. If you remember, Walter Durante won the Pulitzer Prize. Uh, he was a New York Times writer and his cables dispatched uh, that the Soviet Union was this great thing and, and here's what's going on. But he consistently underestimated Stalin's brutality. He described the communist plan to liquidate the 5 million kulaks, relatively well-off farmers, opposed to the Soviet collectivization of agriculture. And he wrote, for example, must all of them and all their families be physically abolished? Of course not. They must be liquidated or melted in the hot fire of exile and labor to the proletarian mass. And so, you know, he, I mean, he essentially looked the other way when it came to the Holodomor and Tucker is in danger, in my estimation, of becoming very much like that. Now, I, I understand that Tucker has freedom of speech. He has a right to do this. But if he's trying to say that he's a legitimate, neutral journalist just getting to the facts, I don't think that's clear. And what's fascinating about this is he's on Twitter, and he'll, his interview will be on Twitter. Robbie G Gramer, I don't know who this guy is, but he put a fascinating comment. Should note, the interview will be posted on a social media platform illegal in Russia, and one where ordinary Russian citizens can face 15 years in prison for tweeting criticisms of the war in Ukraine. If Tucker raises that question, maybe it's a respectable interview, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. Tell me what you think. Put it in the comments below. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and the comments, and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.